Hello, JDS faculty, family, friends, and most important, our JDS students. This is another chapel service that we're embarking upon. We're getting ready to worship. We're getting ready to praise. But we're doing it going into our season of Lent, the time where we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And not only do we remember it, but we reflect on it in a way that helps us to see ourselves in that story. Oftentimes, especially those that are involved in church work, we get so caught up in the work that we forget that the work is not relationship. The work does not take the substitution of relationship. Going to a Christian school, being in a Bible college, being in a divinity program, working in church, all of those things can camouflage themselves and make you feel like they are establishing relationship with Christ. But in this Lenten season, I want us to refocus. I want us to really look at ourselves, be self-reflective and say, Father, how am I walking out my Christian faith to best represent the sacrifice that you made for me? As we worship, as we praise, as we sing, let us do it reflecting on all that Christ has done for us and continues to do for us. I leave you with the words of this song. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Let's work. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with heavy hearts. We are in need of revival and a renewal. We pray, Psalm 51, create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast and right spirit within us. Father, cast us not away from your presence. And please don't take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of our salvation and a willing spirit within us. Today we pray for the kind of inner renewal that only you can give. Father, for truly you desire truth in the inward parts. Thank you for your creative power that can remake our hearts. Remove the stony heart and give us a heart of flesh. We desire and long for your presence, not just in this season, but for the rest of our lives. Hear our cry today, O oh God, and attend unto our prayer. We want all of you, not just the parts that make us feel good, but all of you. Meet us today in ways unfathomable. You have full permission to invade our lives. As the deer pants for the water brook, so our soul longs after you, O oh God. Fill us to overflowing as we seek your face. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Everybody clap your hands right here. Yep. So there are some things that I shouldn't have made it out of. I know it was you, cause my life would be over. It was your grace and your love that turned me from what I was. Another day that you kept me up. 
Let us pray. Dear Lord, in this season of Lent, as we prepare our hearts and minds to reflect in a deeper way on Jesus' sacrifice of his life for the sins of the world and his powerful resurrection from the grave that brought forth life and deliverance, we stand in a posture of gratitude and in awe of all you have done and all that you will do in our lives. Also during this Lenten season, we focus more deeply on prayer, fasting, and giving to the needs of others. We seek you in a more earnest and humble way concerning our need for you and your forgiveness as we self-reflect and turn away from the sins that so easily misalign us with your will. We confess that these focuses should not just be for us during certain seasons like the Lenten season, but that these spiritual disciplines of fasting, praying, giving, repenting, praising, and worshiping should be a lifestyle for us as believers. Grant us the grace, O God, to keep our souls and spirits fixed on you at all times and in every season, that our relationship with you, O Lord, 
would continue to grow stronger and stronger and deeper in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everybody. My name is Solomon Washira Waigwa. I am a professor here at uh, Jake's Divinity School, and uh, I am delighted to bring the homily today uh, for our chapel service at Jake's Divinity School. This is the beginning of Lent. And uh, as you may be aware, the word Lent is from Latin. It means to lengthen uh, because it uh, depicts uh, a spring when we have longer days than the other parts of the year. But in the Christian tradition, the word Lent really signifies the time when Jesus Christ went into the wilderness to be tested of the devil. And the Bible says that for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, he was hungry. He did not eat any food. He fasted there and the devil came to uh, tempt him. And, and so we uh, use this time to remember the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and how uh, he saved us. Fasting itself is a very vital, yet sometimes neglected by many Christians. It's a vital practice that is usually neglected uh, by many Christians. But when you consider Jesus Christ himself, when he started his instructions on fasting, he did not say, if you fast. He said, when you fast. That means Jesus expects us, his followers, that we will take up this spiritual discipline and fast like he did. The author, Arthur Wallace, in his book, God's Chosen Fast, a spiritual and practical guide to fasting, which, by the way, I, I need to add here that I would like to recommend it to all my students who would want to study further this uh, idea of Christian fasting. It's a very essential guide in the study of biblical fasting. So Wallace, other Wallace, in that enduring monograph, he explains that fasting has a very unique and very special purpose in the economy of our Christian lives. The chief purpose of fasting is to bring about the physical conditions that allow for a spiritual growing closer and closer to God. You see, biblical fasting is indeed a sure way to deepen our relationship with God. If you want a deeper and closer walk with God, then fasting will take you there. And in this period of Lent, we are all called as faithful Christians to this noble Christian uh, 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 practice of fasting. But I want to talk a little about biblical fasting, not just a religious phenomenon. Biblical fasting itself rewards our quest for spiritual renewal by drawing us to God. When you look in the Old Testament, you will find that among the great Bible saints in the Old Testament, they fasted. Moses fasted. You know, he was a great lawgiver and a deliverer of Israel. He fasted when he delivered uh, the children of Israel from the house of bondage. David, the great king of Israel, fasted and he sought after God. He sought God by fasting and by prayer and various other ways, so much so that God himself testified of him that he was indeed a man after God's own heart. Elijah, that great prophet in the Old Testament, also fasted. Daniel was a man that fasted many seer, becoming a great, uh, 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 he, was, he was a man that fasted many times. He became a seer for Israel. When you go to the New Testament, you will find in the New Testament the 
greatest example of fasting for all. Jesus Christ himself is the greatest example of fasting. Our Lord taught his disciples how to fast. His apostles also fasted too. And church history shows us that fasting has a unique place in the life of the early church. And, and please make no mistake, this vital biblical practice was no preserve for only men. For between Hannah in the Old Testament and Anna in the New Testament, our Bible is replete with faithful women who interceded on behalf of the needy, on behalf of Israel by fasting. And in church history itself, church history chronicles among great giants of our faith who fasted. We see men uh, like uh, the great reformers of history of the church, Luther himself, Calvin, John Knox, and all these men were men who fasted, and many women as well, I believe, who fasted. And fasting has never been confined to a specific church tradition or a particular theological school of thought. For example, you will find that among serious fasting Christian leaders in colonial America, right here in our area, Jonathan Edwards was an American who himself fasted and he was a Calvinist. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you will find John Wesley. And John Wesley, who leaned theologically towards Arminianism, he was also a faster. And that tells me that uh, the idea of fasting has no uh, theological inclination. Everybody that sought after God used this practice. And a practice that is picked up in the contemporary church and we find that it remains even today a channel of power that you and I can adopt and practice and it will grow us closer to God. Yet fewer and fewer Christians today practice this spirituality practice this rite of fasting and therefore spirituality has waned and we see worldliness uh, 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 coming towards the church, even flourishing in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, my dear friends, yet there is hope. There is hope, there is good news because as Father Wallace tells us there is a new day that is dawning in the church and I am so elated that uh, we are celebrating that day this Lent. Uh, we are walking into a situation where the church of Jesus Christ is wakening up with a new thirst and a new quest for God. The Spirit of God is beginning to awaken the slumbering church. This is a day of spiritual renewal. So this Lent season, for us here at Jake's Divinity School, as well as in our respective ministries, we will take this season very seriously. We will take this season very seriously. We will observe God's chosen first. We will seek to walk closer with our Lord. And in the text that we read, we read that a clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence and your Holy Spirit take not from me. It says, give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. A willing spirit sustain in me. And that's where I will wrap it up. A willing spirit sustain in me. A willing spirit you need to will, to do the will of the Lord that you fast as you pray. 
So in closing we say we will lose the chains of injustice and we will untie the cords of the yoke. We will set the oppressed free. We will break every fetal of sin. We will break every chain. We will break every yoke. We will share with our food with the hungry and we will provide the poor wanderer with shelter and when we see the naked we will clothe them and we will not turn away from our own flesh and blood for that my friends that that is the god's chosen fast that dear ones is what we will do that's the disposition that we will cultivate in this land heavenly father we come before you just seeking to do your will great and everlasting father we pray that by your spirit the heart cry of our fasting church will ascend to heaven the spirit of god we pray that you will begin to continue to stire us today into prayer and fasting. Help us now, even as we fast in this Lent, to lose the chains of injustice. Help us to untie the cords of every yoke. Help us to set the oppressed free. Help us to break every chain, every yoke, to share our food with the hungry and to provide the homeless with shelter. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, if you believe with me, will you say, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you. Father, as we approach the Lenten season, create in us, O oh God, a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Father, I thank you today that as we approach this season, Father, you are helping us to remove the things that should not be. You are strengthening our hearts. You are strengthening our lives. You are strengthening our well-being. You're pruning the trees of our life of unnecessary fruit. And I thank you, God, that you've given us the ability and the want to sacrifice things that should not be. I thank you, God, that you are purifying our minds, that you're purifying our hearts, that you're cleansing our souls and washing us white as snow. Father, in this season of Lent, I ask that you would open the doors of creativity, open the minds of your people today and allow us to see how beautiful life really is when we give everything over to you. So, Father, we make the sacrifice to grow in you, to grow in your word, to grow in our prayer life, to grow in our fasting life, but ultimately to continue to grow as your children. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed these segments during this Lent season, and we've been preparing our hearts for Easter. Lent is all about consecration, fasting, praying, giving, sacrificing, showing mercy. We are decreasing so that He can increase in us. And we have a time of repentance, renewal, because we're understanding what He did for us, what God did with Jesus and Jesus giving his life for us. And during this time, we've been reading the scriptures. We've been showing grace and mercy to our brothers and sisters. Most important, probably grace and mercy to ourselves, forgiving ourselves for things that we've held over our heads that Jesus has forgiven a long time ago. That's what Lent is all about, focusing on him, gaining a tighter perspective on who he is and what he has done and the relationship that you share with him. You should be deeper now in him. You should know him greater and more than you have all year. So I wanna pray for you as we close this out. 
Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for all of the time that we have spent discussing Lent, sacrifice, fasting and prayer, the power of mercy. And here we are preparing to thrust forward even more with having gained a tighter perspective on our relationship with you, our walk with you, our love for you and your love for us. Just keeping at the forefront of our mind who you are and what you have done. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory and we give you praise. We love you for what you did. Nobody else could do it. Nobody else would do it, but you did. And we thank you and we give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Thank you.